All right, it is time for another detector unboxing. I'm in a different unboxing location. I'm actually in the shop this time rather than upstairs in my room. Um, just because, I don't know, I felt like being down here today. Um, also because it's easier because all my alarms are stored down here too. So, um, I thought that was something important. Um, I almost did the same thing again. I grabbed the sharp end of the knife with my finger. This one actually got here relatively quickly, um, despite it bouncing back and forth between Baltimore and D.C. for about two days, a day and a half or so. So, about, here it is. And there she is, right there, folks. And uh, you may notice that it looks very familiar if you've watched this channel for a while, because I do have an alarm that is very similar to this um, right here. Um, they're the, almost the exact same thing, so I'm going to get into detail about that in a minute. But first, let's take the camera down here. Um, this here is a... What is it? I believe it's General Home Products brand smoke detector. Um, it's made by JSNA Corporation, which was an electronics corporation. Um, and these are, I think these are the very first sort of, um, sort of like micro profile, if you will, designs. Um, they came out in, I think, 1979, 1978, 1979, somewhere around there. Um, and they were designed as like the next big thing in smoke detector technology they were like supposed to be like the most streamlined most technologically advanced model that existed on the market at the time and they are definitely far ahead of their time i mean this came out in 1979 or so and the fire x's came out um a few years before then the fire x um F -O -G -F -X -B with the squealer horn and those were even bigger than this so this was yes this was the first like slim design of smoke alarm that ever existed. So these were definitely well ahead of their time. Now if I go ahead and look on the back here, you can see that there's nothing on the base um, and the battery, the, there's no like thing to get the battery out. But if we open the cover, you can see, maybe, if I can get the cover open with one hand, that would be really nice. Seems like it's. Give me one second here. All right, I got it off. And um, okay, so here is the label from on top of the sensor that fell off. And this is like a little label that the uh, the uh, seller wrote. It's a General Home Products unit. Now this right here. I don't know. Just a little label that says ionization. I thought that was like a label that had fallen off. But you can see on the inside here, it's a very small circuit board. Now this one's circuit board is actually a little bit different than the other one that I have right here, and I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, it's got a very simple uh, ionization sensor on the right here. It's just like a cylinder. This is going to keep falling off. Um, just like a little cylinder. This one's a little rusted. And then the horn is on the left here, and that is the piezoelectric element itself. It's not enclosed in any sort of casing or anything. It's just right there out in the open with this little sort of can at the bottom of it that acts as like a resonator, I think. And these were, despite also being the one of the very first smallest like streamlined models like this ever produced, these were also, I think, the very first model to ever use a piezoelectronic horn instead of the um, mechanical squealer that we all know and love. Um, so this was the beginning of the revolution, so to speak. Now this battery that it's, it came with here is awfully corroded. It's an old Everetti. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get 
Okay, yeah, the terminal just snapped off. So I'm going to have to find a new battery connector for it, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, well, yeah, one of the terminals snapped off and is stuck on the battery. No big deal. Actually, the other one isn't that bad. Um, I can also see that the battery wires are very, very brittle about to break off of the PCB itself. The LED on this one is much smaller um, than like the other one that I have here. Actually, this one, as you all remember, is the Entronic model. It's rebranded JSNA. And these are a little bit different. They have the label on the back here, but they have an opening on the, the back for the battery to slide out. The cover is not um, marketed as being openable on these, but you actually can open it up if I put this tripod down here. See, you can just open them right up, and you can clearly see how different the PCB is. This one's PCB is a little bit more involved. You've got a bigger LED. It's a different color overall. It's like a, a dark green or pale greenish. This one's like a tan or beige. you got a sensitivity adjustment right here. This one lacks any sort of sensitivity adjustment. Um, there's also a resistor right there which this one doesn't have, and a diode, and another resistor, which this one also doesn't have, but it does have a resistor right there next to the horn. And actually, that resistor right there looks a little bit older in style than the ones that are on this one, which is very interesting, or maybe not, maybe that's the same. Actually, I think that looks about the same. But the LED is definitely much smaller. It's got a very big LED. And you'll notice on the covers, that one's got a lens there in the middle. This one's lens has actually gone missing. Now, I have sort of planned for that. I'm going to see if um, the thing that I have works. So this right here is a little lens, and it looks like it might be too small. But we're going to try it. Oh, one back in the bag. Oh, one second. Have the furnace turning on during the video. Yep, way too, way too small. Okay, my idea was, uh, <laughs> didn't work. Um, I thought I could use this little, this is from a Lionel, uh, it's a Lionel train part for like locomotives, and um, I thought it would fit, but it's just too small, which is unfortunate. It's literally, I thought it looked exactly the same from the picture. That's a shame. Oh well, I wasted about a dollar on that. No huge deal. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is the inside of the cover here. Because this one's cover, while it's not meant to be removed, also has labeling on the inside, which I didn't show you before. Because I didn't know that you could open the cover on this one. But this one does have information. It's funny, the... Uh, That's a radioactive material. I don't think the uh, the address or the name of the brand is covered up. Or it's a nuclear license thing. And then actually this little plate, yeah, this is where the, uh, the test button contacts hit right there. So um, I'm going to see if I can't find a battery. Uh connector that I, I definitely have I've got to have at least one kicking around here somewhere so let me see if I can find one that I can uh, uh, replace this one the broken one with and then we can give it a test all right I did find one so I'm gonna snip this one off and I'm gonna wire it up just probably temporarily just so I can get it for a test okay we got the battery connect the new connector on um, I'm gonna very carefully connect the battery and hope it doesn't false and also hope that wire doesn't break off. Here we go. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to leave the battery out because I really don't trust bending that wire back. Um, and let's put 
the cover. I'm just going to tuck the wires in that little crack there. Put the cover back on so we can test it. Maybe. <laughs> Once again, maybe. There we go. Okay. All right, let's try for a test in three, two, one. Oh. It works. And the LED in this one goes on. Now, how does that one compare to this one's pitch? Sounds exactly the same. I will say this one is just a slight bit louder than this one. Um, and you'll also notice that this one's little red dot there it doesn't say anything on it. I think it used to say push to test, but it's faded over the years. This one says circuit test, and it has a little white dot in the middle, so that's another difference. But uh, yeah, the LED in this one actually stays on now. Um, the fun fact about this model, this one actually came out, uh, it came from... The same seller that um, Enlund got, he also got one of these uh, JSNA General Home Products models from the same exact seller. These were actually from a display um, from a fire department in uh, Pennsylvania. They came out, out of a display that they had. Um, they bought like every single, like the, every single one of the very first like smoke detectors of their kind. Um, like for instance, I got my uh, brief sneak peek of the detector wall here, but I got this 700A also from them. So this one is actually from the same seller and the same exact display as this one. So these two are back together again. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so yeah, but um, the th funny thing about uh, Nathaniel's end lens that he bought, his, um, the LED doesn't go on when you test it for some reason, which is very strange. But this one's LED stays lit like normal, like the ES3s. Yeah, like I said, with the ES3, it's really not loud at all. It's about as loud as like a microwave buzzer or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm incredibly surprised that this one actually still works like it's intended to because you saw all that rust on the sensor and all the, the battery corrosion from this old EverReady. Um, the LED is also still flashing, I noticed, so LED still works perfectly fine. Uh, another testament to just how good this old technology was and how reliable and substantial it was. I mean, even like take one of these things, for example. This one was brand new in the box, so obviously, of course, this one's going to work. But this one had its original battery connected. It leaked, it exploded, it corroded everywhere, got all over the circuit board inside the cover, the center's all rusted, the horn's all rusted, the wires are all brittle, and yet the thing still works. Isn't that incredible? So, um, and uh, once again, this here is that label that was on top of the sensor. This one didn't have a label. I think it would have normally had a la another label on top of the sensor here that had all the model information. It may have, may have faded over the years. Um, but I think the model number was like 1206 or something like that. Um, so this is the General Home Products JSNA model 1206 smoke detector. The uh, sort of the original quote unquote variant of the Vigilante Entronic ES3 or Entronic Vigilante ES3. One, let's do one more test of each of them. The JSNA. and the Entronic. So, um, I think that's going to do it for this video. So that is the uh, General Home Products, or JSNA, Model 1206 Smoke Detector. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and there will be more to come.